Hello again, I am Jim Bob and welcome back to Lone Oak Farm. We're on to day four, we're halfway through our spring window. And uh, although it's not quite 10 degrees outside for ground temperatures, 9 degrees is pretty close, I think. So we are going to try and finish off our planting today, or at least make some real headway on our planting as far as our soybean and corn goes. Now, obviously, we are without the Magnum. That is still completely out of commission. But we do have a quad track on the way. Uh, it is going to be delivered to Manning's. And when they open at eight o'clock, we will head over there and arrange to get, you know, to collect that. Now we are going to have to pay lease costs on that because we're bringing it in and we're basically leasing it for the rest of the spring and possibly into the summer as well, depending on how our planting goes and how long it takes to fix the Magnum. So not cheap. It's going to end up costing us quite a bit of money. Uh, but our orchard is now generating. So uh, it is now generating quite a nice, tidy amount of cash every day so that is really going to start eating into our debt quite quickly which is what we need because if I just uh, stop and fill this up while we're doing that I'll nip into the office and I'll pull up our bank finances so you can see exactly where we're standing right now there we go let's get that refueling and while that's doing that as I say let's jump into the office So, as you can see, financially, we currently have a debt of 990000 with the bank. Very, very high debt indeed. Uh, we need to get that resolved as quickly as we can. But we also need to start fertilising our fields as well, which is why we're in the sprayer. So that's going to be the first thing that we get started today, is getting some spraying done. And as I say, at 8 o'clock, I'll get one of the boys to drive me over to Manning's in the truck. And then I'll pick up the quad track, bring that back, and we'll make a, a start on getting some planting done as well. So let's get the boom arms unfolded. We're going to need to weed our grass fields again at some point as well. So a lot of fertilizing jobs starting to stack up pretty quickly. Uh, now these two fields here, these are already at stage two. So these will be, uh, these will be done you know, almost immediately. We won't have to worry about these fields again. But beyond that, it is going to start getting quite uh, quite, quite tricky to get, make sure that everything gets fertilised. We have got a lot of additional fields this year that we didn't have last year. So, a lot of work that is still needs to be done in that respect. What I also did last night, just to finish things off, was once I'd uh, added manure to all of those trees, I topped the shed back up a little bit more with the truck. We won't be using the truck to deliver manure anymore. From now on, where we need to get manure, we'll take our little uh, Joskin trailer. That's why we bought it. I just wanted to get a big load in to get us started using our, our, uh, our Boss trailer and our uh, BSM 850. But now that we have a full amount of you know, manure available to us, I've also topped up the, the water tanks as well. So we should have plenty of manure and water to keep us going for the next few days because it's going to be very busy on the farm over the next few days. I don't want to have to make a lot of trips to uh, top up water and to top up manure outside of actually working on the orchard itself. So that's just kind of tied us over. And then going forward, as I say, you know, when we need more manure we will run over to the purchase point until we actually have enough manure of our own here on the farm uh, we are just a few days away now from getting cows on our farm I think four or five days away uh, from getting dairy livestock getting close to selling our soybean from last year as well that's going to be vital that we get a really strong price for that because, uh, as I say, financially we are struggling a little bit. Uh, a lot of expense involved in that. And we have a great demand at Hollister for sugar beets. We don't have sugar beets. And I have toyed with the possibility of maybe doing some sugar beets next year. We'll have to see. We might look at uh, picking up a couple of fields for some sugar beets in the off in the off season over winter and maybe look at doing some sugar beet work next year 
uh, but it could be quite expensive getting all the relative equipment that we would need in terms of harvesters etc so that's something we can think about uh, because we, we could always lease the harvesters you know uh, so we don't have to have to spend hundreds of thousands to buy them we'll see how that goes but as I say for now what I want to make sure is get uh, all these fields fertilized as quick as I can just looking to basically use up the next bit of time until we hit eight o'clock and then I'll head over to Manning's we'll grab that uh, quad track that Sam has uh, ordered in for us uh, we'll get a, an update on the Magnum hopefully while we're there and then we'll uh, we'll be attacking the fields and doing some real planting this afternoon getting our corn and our soybeans started off getting towards the end of this first field here field 35 as soon as this is done I will move over and start work on field 30 as well that is going to be one that's awkward for for workers to get to uh, so it's going to be easier for me to do that field I think uh, and then once I've done that field it'll be probably actually closer to nine o'clock you know maybe even sort of half nine maybe even ten o'clock by that point but we will be heading over uh, to Manning's and collecting the uh, the uh, the quad track. So the workers are going to be spraying the rest of our fields for us after this one. So our canola fields uh, just over here, uh, which are fields 34, and then our sort of joined field of 33 and 32, uh, and they'll also look at doing field 43 as well. Field 45 is another awkward shaped field, so it might be easier for me to spray that one manually. Uh, there's no immediate rush to get every single field sprayed today. We have got a little bit of a window to play about with. Uh, and the fact that this is stage three for this field as well as the field 35 that we've just done means these two will not need to be touched again now for the rest of the year until it comes to actually harvesting them. Uh, so that's two less fields to worry about. But we are definitely going to have to try and be clever and allocate our staff accordingly to get all these various different jobs done and any weeding that we do on our grass fields again they just need one final stage we have to do that manually ourselves because you know the uh, the rollers don't let us hire a worker unless we're actually planting at the same time and of course we can't do that on a field that's already got crop on it even if it's just grass so yeah we're going to have to manually weed our grass fields that's fine we can get that done ourselves it's just it's going to be a time consuming process so that might be something that I do at the end of the day off camera uh, just so that we don't have to worry about that I do I suppose technically need to send my puma up and uh, cultivate our two uh, chaffing fields fields five and six as well they were ploughed but they haven't been cultivated yet and we kind of ran out of time to do that yesterday because we had to appropriate the cultivator or had to appropriate the puma to try and finish off our seeding or with the magnum going down and out of action so yeah definitely going to be a, a, an interesting day I think we're going to be bouncing around between a lot of different jobs uh, we'll be doing some bits ourselves manually then switching to a different piece of equipment and doing some work there and yeah, it could be quite a hectic day today uh, but I do as I say need to try and make a, a, a good a start on our corn and soybean fields today so I think what I'll do is I'll start the corn today. I'll get the corn planted because if we can get that planted on our fields here and then get it planted up on the chaffing, we can get that uh, that chaffing corn grown quickly, which means that's silage that we can work on hopefully sort of around midsummer, maybe maybe a little bit later than that, but hopefully around midsummer time, mid to late summer, we'll be able to get that corn on fields five and six chaffed and into the BGA start fermenting that we do need to think about potentially getting some kind of uh, wheel loader I think to work up there as well I might have to I might have to start looking at options for one of those so I'm gonna carry on working away on this field here uh, as you can see it's just gone eight o'clock actually we might be done by around about half eight you know before nine o'clock at this rate so I'll keep working away here and then as soon as this field is done, we're off to Mannings to collect our, our quad track. Uh, 
Uh, just run out of fertilizer. <laughs> so going to need to go and top this up. We could probably do with a larger sprayer at some point as well. Seeing as that's going to be our, our main route for fertilizing our crops now. We could do with something that's got a larger capacity than just three and a quarter thousand litres. We'll make do with what we have though. Money is still tight even though we are making a, a nice little amount now from our orchard. We still have a huge debt to pay off and potentially a very large repair bill uh, from Case regarding our Magnum as well. Yeah, I would like to get a larger sprayer, I think. Something with a, a, a bigger tank. Something that's not going to run out quite so quickly. It's not so much of an issue here when we're close to the farm. It's only a short little drive. But when we're halfway down the map, you know, on some of our further away fields, and then our tank runs dry, it's a long drive back to, to refill our cedar, or our sprayer again, to then send it all the way back out again. Yeah, and some of those other fields that we've got are quite big, so... There's every chance that we might have to do it. We might get away with it between fields, but we would end up with the possibility of having to do it on the field, which is something I would rather avoid if at all possible. So that's uh, that's something else for us to start thinking about. Plus, we really, I, we really kind of need a, a larger cultivator now. Uh, I have actually sent the puma off to fields five and six. He has started cultivating a way to clean those fields up for us. Uh, and we will uh, probably do our planting there you know, um, in the afternoon. We'll try and get the ones done here at the farm first. But, yeah, we could do with a larger cultivator because, you know, again, we've got a lot of fields and, and now all we have is a six metre cultivator. <laughs> it's, uh, it's not the most ideal kind of working with so that's another expensive piece of equipment I hadn't really budgeted for uh, that we're going to need as well so you know, potentially a new sprayer although we can kind of continue to get by with this one but definitely going to need a new cultivator so I'm going to have to start looking at options seeing what's out there that's good in terms of price and size and try and find something that strikes a happy balance between the two uh, yeah, fingers crossed. We'll uh, we'll actually get some get some good news on that front and find something that's that's more than suitable. So I've had one of the lads drop me off here at the store, and there is our brand new least quad track. Let's just have a quick poke through the window. Yeah, there is our Magnum still undergoing some service work. <laughs> Uh, in fact, actually, let's just have a quick pop in, and uh, we need to go around the back here and speak to the lads in the warehouse, find out what's wrong with our Magnum. So it turns out it needs a completely new engine, which is going to be horrifically expensive. both in terms of the amount of time it's going to take uh, therefore you know the amount of time we're going to have to use this this is not cheap it's cost us 30 grand or so just to arrange the lease and we're going to have to pay for every additional hour that we uh, we have this thing in use as well you know so uh, this is going to be a very expensive little loan here on our farm but I mean it's, it's awesome in here. I mean, look at this thing. I wouldn't mind getting one of these for the farm. I really wouldn't. Maybe year three, we may actually end up purchasing one of these. Right now, as long as we can get the Magnum back up and running, we can probably make do without one of these. But it is something that, as I say, we are kind of having forced upon us a little bit simply because of the, the circumstances we find ourselves in. Not amazingly fast at 26 miles an hour, same speed as our Puma, so uh, we will potentially end up causing some, some queues. You can see the traffic there catching us in our rear view mirror. But this thing is just, you know, immensely impressive. 
So big, so powerful, so heavy as well. There we go. Right. Let's get back to the farm. Let's get hooked up to our cedar. And let's start planting some corn. There we go, corn selected. So, uh, which fields are we planting corn on? Uh, we are planting corn on fields 48 and field 51. So, if we take a look at the menu down here, 48 is this field here. That's quite an unusually shaped field there. That's going to be an interesting one. And then this is field 51 here. Much, much friendlier. We'll have to be careful on this edge so we don't get too close to the orchard. And we'll have to be careful on this edge because of the tree line. But, you know, we can get a worker to run through that section nice and easily. This one, uh, a worker can do most of this. And then we're going to have to kind of do this section here as well manually. We may as well end up doing this field ourselves, I think, for the most part. Uh, where is our worker over here? You can see he's still cultivating away on field six. Uh, we will be uh, planting corn on these two fields up here as well once we're done on uh, 48 and 51. And then once those are done, if we still have time today, we can look at getting some soybean planted as well. So let's close the lid on that. Let's make our way over to field 48. And we're off. Now, one thing I have always found is that when using an articulated tractor like this, uh, that you know, whatever you're towing tends to be quite twitchy. So you have to be really careful when making corrections, you know, in your change in your direction of travel, because it's really easy to uh, just make a, a slight twitch, but end up throwing your cedar off on quite a different tangent without even realising it. Especially when backing up, you'll see the cedar as you start to reverse and then start pivoting. You'll see the cedar will twitch all over the place, you know, changing direction here and there and every which way. So, let's uh, just reduce cruise control down. There we go. Caught on that sort of raised edge just there. Got to be careful. I don't want to plant on the edge of that field. There we go. But this is what I mean by the twitchiness. You just do a little bit of a turn like this. And as the back straightens up, it immediately just pulls the cedar out again like that. You can kind of end up changing the position of your tractor on the field just by doing this. And it affects the cedar. And that's something that you need to be wary of, especially when you have uh, something that's connected directly without like an intermediary link. There we go. Right, so we'll run down here uh, and then when we get to the bottom we'll try and run a border around the rest of this field get that all connected up and then we can just start filling in the gaps and running up and down and get the uh, get the tricky bit over in the corner done first I think and then come back up onto this large sort of flatted out section here and then we'll move across onto that field there field 51 and get that done uh, we do need to uh, get a header sorted as well for our combine so that we can actually harvest this corn that we're putting down 
obviously with the uh, corn that we're going to put on fields five and six that'll be chaffed we've already got a forage harvester lined up because you know it's sitting in our garage waiting for use but yeah this is going to be very very different you know this is uh yeah you know, this is something that we're going to need a proper header for uh, and whereas we kind of made do with uh, a small header last year that's not going to work you know for us this time round one thing i have noticed when turning a corner is it really pushes the cedar out very very wide and likewise when you're turning that way it pulls it in a long way as well so you've, you know your turning is greatly kind of exaggerated at the back of the cedar compared to the actual sort of change of direction that you're inputting it's making it quite uh, <laughs> quite awkward and a real challenge compared to what I'm used to I'm so used to using something like the Magnum with one of these rather than uh, you know something with a fixed body rather than something with a pivot so you'll see again as we turn here it immediately starts pushing the cedar off the back and while it's great going around the edge of a corner for making sure that you get everything it's it's more awkward when you have to turn in, turn uh, sort of with the field in the opposite direction so again just see how much it kind of swings that out a little bit because of the the uh, the stepping out of the rear end of the tractor it's uh, it's it's going to be fun i think trying to <laughs> trying to turn corners like this i think this is definitely going to be suited for just straight up and down work luckily that's pretty much all we have for the most of our fields but field 49 i think or no field 45 yeah that could be a very oh no we've already seeded 45 haven't we we put barley on that field that's just as well because that would have been a very interesting field to try and seed with this with this setup so kind of glad we got that one out of the way just finishing off this kind of lower section of this field here and then uh, once we get back up to the top we'll need to hand this over to a worker because we need to go and top up our cedar our sprayer sorry that has now run out of uh, fertilizer so I'll have to take that back and uh, get that topped up so we can get that back on on the field as well and we're probably getting close to the puma finishing off his work as well there we go there's a little patch just around the corner that needs just to be tagged just a thin little spot that I missed just see it coming into view now there it is excellent stuff so we'll get a worker to finish this field off for us let's try and get lined up and in position there we go just jump out excellent stuff so he'll carry on working away on that field for us uh, now just a bit further over behind these trees where our uh, canola is it was our corn last year that's where our sprayer is you can just see it actually coming to view there uh, he's run out of uh, liquid fertilizer so we'll jump in that we'll take that back to the farm we'll get that topped up and then we'll carry on spraying our fields with the sprayer So the sprayer is back up and running and continuing to fertilize away. Uh, we're just going to uh, move over here from field six, which is now complete, and start cultiv cultivating away on field five. I have to remember there's that really nasty <laughs> little ditch just there. Do not want to end up falling foul of that again. So we'll, we'll come in here 
on the actual entry point to the field. Get the cultivator unfolded. And we'll put a border in on this edge of the field. So that we don't end up, you know, <laughs> burying ourselves in that ditch again. There we go. Oh, just hanging on the edge of the field there. <laughs> that was pretty close. And now we can run up and down here and get this field uh, cultivated quite n nicely and quickly. Really, I'm looking forward to uh, doing some chaffing work on this section of the map later in the year. Obviously, we've got to get it planted first, and that's going to happen a little bit later this afternoon once we're done planting our other two cornfields. I think that might be all we'll have time for in terms of planting. You can see it's half past 12, and we still haven't finished off that first field yet. Second field's going to be easier because it's just straight up and down on that field once we put the, uh, the headlands in. But even so, all that's going to leave us time for is to then kind of come up and do these two. I don't think we're going to have time to start on the soybean today. So that's fine. I mean, we're planting the corn today. It's still not going to start growing today because the temperature isn't high enough. It's only 9 degrees and it needs to be 10 degrees for the corn to start growing. But we are well inside the planting window which opened up yesterday. So basically, even though the corn assuming the temperature hits 10 degrees tomorrow which I'll be amazed if it doesn't um, you know it's going to grow at the same speed and rate and start growing at the same time as the soybean but it you know we could have waited until we had 10 degrees but then we would have all of our fields to plant at exactly the same time and we would then end up with our soybean fields falling behind schedule or our corn fields falling behind schedule so getting some of them planted today means that it's less of a workload tomorrow to get the rest of them planted because as I say we still have to plant uh, field 49, 53 and 54. 49 is currently the biggest field that we own and 53 and 54 are pretty big sized fields as well so that's probably going to take most if not all of the day to uh, to get those planted and we're still going to have cultivate uh, sorry fertilizing work that needs to be done as well so yeah, it just makes sense to kind of spread that workload a little bit so we're not overly uh, overly pushed for time and who knows hopefully hopefully tomorrow we might even get the magnum back who knows they are waiting on components for uh, an engine rebuild we're actually going to have the engine power upped slightly as well our magnum currently puts out a little over 400 horsepower uh, as part of the rebuild we're going to up that to around about 440 so give it a little bit more grunt just because I think going forward, you know, to have that little bit of extra power might end up being quite useful. And seeing as we need to rebuild the, the entire engine, it makes sense to, you know, uh, fit it with uh, components that give it a little bit more power. Just give us that little bit of extra grunt. So let's carry on cultivating away. And when this is done, uh, we'll probably be ready to start seeding corn on field 51. Okay, so here we are on the edge of field 51. Time to uh, do a little manual headland around here. You can see it's quite awkward in the way it's shaped and with that little rise as well means we can't just kind of cut across because it is going to raise the cedar up quite a bit. So the easiest way for us to do this is to follow the edge of the field and then cut back and just have a, uh, uh, a little straightening out piece done next to that as well. go and let's see how much we earn from our orchard as well about to tick over to a new hour around four thousand an hour that's not bad that's not bad at all that's really going to help 
uh, combat our uh, our daily expenses, which are very very high. Plus, we've got the the loan payments going out for this as well. Also, the lease payments going out for uh, for this cedar. Uh, sorry, for this uh, this quad track. And we have you know that huge debt. Our daily debt you know interest is four thousand a day from the bank because we have a debt of nearly a million. So. <laughs> Uh, you know, the quicker we can get that reduced down, the better. It really is going to help us out, you know, tremendously. So we're just going to straighten this piece out here. We need to go and put a headland in at the other end of this field as well, because that is where the orchard is, just over there. Uh, and the fence means that, you know, our worker will automatically, you know, have some issues when we get too close to that. go and I did see just a little spot that we missed at the back there it's really hard to <laughs> reverse this thing with that pivot and there we go so I just tagged the little piece that we missed on the edge there so let's run up here And then when we get to the end, we'll do a headland. We'll cut down the side of the orchard so that we don't get too close to that fence. And then we'll get a worker to finish the rest of the field off for us. You can just see our trees starting to uh, appear in the uh, in the in the background there, along with uh, our equipment. And then eventually, the shed will uh, will spawn into view as well. You just see the frame coming in and then the uh, extension behind it and then eventually the doors will spawn in as well i wonder if we'll see the manure spawn inside before we see the doors spawn <coughs> oh that's our sprayer that's finished we'll need to get him up and running on his next field as well I'm not seeing a big pile of manure spawn in yet uh, nope, the door spawned in first. That kind of makes sense. But there is our uh, our nice little orchard there, making us some good money. Four thousand dollars a day, uh, an hour. That is uh, very healthy. Of course, we won't be able to you know, utilize that all year round. Yeah, when it gets to winter, it's going to be way too cold for us to you know uh, to grow anything on those trees. So. Spring, summer and part of autumn is the only times of the year we'll actually be able to use the orchard before it starts getting too cold. And we will have to, as I say, you know, you know, just leave the orchard as is until the start of the following year when we can start getting it back up and running again and producing fruit for us once the climate you know, uh, warms a little bit. So yes, we are making a lot of money per hour with it, but it's not, you know, an all year round thing. It is something that is going to uh, to be unavailable for us for at least three, probably four or five months of the year. It certainly won't have it through winter and possibly part of, uh, you know, part of autumn as well. Right, we are ready for our worker to take over seeding duties over here again. So let's just get onto the right line. There we go. And hire the worker. Fantastic stuff. So, while he is... Uh, let's move out of the way. While he is off and running planting corn here, we are going to head over to the sprayer, get that set up on the next field. Uh, and then we'll check in on the cultivating, make sure that's done, uh, and see where we go from there. So just arriving back on the farm with the puma here. We're going to get this cleaned off and clean off the cultivator, put that away. Uh, I have uh, spoken to Sam about uh, uh, getting in a new cultivator, which we're going to look at hopefully getting tomorrow. 
Uh, we've gone for a horse joker. Uh, it's a little unusual. It's uh, a cultivator I don't really tend to use. Uh, it's going to need around 330 horsepower to pull, so it's going to be beyond the capabilities of our Puma. But you know, uh, our Magnum, once that's fixed, will be able to cope with that quite nicely. And that'll give us, I think, a, a 12 meter working width, uh, which is going to be much more suitable for this uh, for this farm. You know, given the position that we're in now in terms of our fields, so I'm still deciding whether or not to keep hold of this cultivator as well, just so that we have got something that the puma can use, or something that be used more, perhaps more suitable for the smaller fields, like fields five and six. I'm unsure what I want to do about that just yet. But what I am going to do is uh, get some skinny wheels fitted on this. Uh, and uh, we're going to do some rolling on our grass field here. 44, is it? Yeah, field 44. We're going to get that rolled and uh, up to stage 3. So that tomorrow we only have to do field 24 uh, with our rollers. And get all of our, uh, our grass fully fertilised, ready for the summer. just pulling away from the farm having restocked our cedar as it was empty and I went in there with around about 5,000 in the positive bank balance and I've come out with minus 17,000 <laughs> that's horrendously bad now some of that is obviously the seed cost I think it cost us around about seven grand to fill up the cedar which isn't bad for just under 6,000 litres of seed unfortunately though <laughs> I did tick over to the uh, start of a fresh hour on the Magnum here. Sorry, on the uh, the quad track. So uh, that has hit us with another sixteen and a half thousand dollar fee. Uh, very, very expensive. So all the money that I kind of had, you know, um, has suddenly just gone. Uh, <laughs> we're now quite heavily in debt again. Uh, it's not great, but uh, we'll get through it just have a small bit of this field just to finish off and once that's done we'll be heading up the road to go and uh, plant our chaffing fields so let's just uh, start unfolding and turn around go and you can see that's where we ran out last time a little bit further up where the uh, the dark patch just sticks out a little bit on the left hand side so almost done with our corn planting for the main farm and we may possibly even end up chaffing some of this as well we'll see how how good a yield we get from our existing fields but I may well end up, you know, depending on how quickly we fill up our silos. Because don't forget, we didn't really do that much harvesting. We did one small field last year, which was field 32. And we've got fields 51 and 48, which are substantially larger. Yeah, we've got two fields of corn. We could end up with a mountain of corn that we might not be able to sell, you know, very easily. So I could possibly chaff one of these two fields as well we'll see how much we get after harvesting one of them and if it's an awful lot then as I say what we may well do is you know to work around you know the fact that it's going to be tricky to sell large volumes we could possibly uh, look at uh, chaffing you know the other one of these two fields but don't forget corn has two kind of windows you know in the year where we can sell it there's one sort of in the winter which is where we sold ours last time and there's also one in the summer as well so there's two separate windows where we can get a very very strong price for corn so if we do end up with a large volume of corn that we just can't shift all in one go we do still have that fallback option of a second window six months later so that's something else that we could take into consideration as well yeah it'll be interesting to see how it all shakes out as to whether or not we do end up you know adding to our corn chaff but i do tend you know i, I do intend on sort of using the grass from our grass fields once we've got our hay sorted for uh, for this year to use that for chaff as well so yeah be very interesting indeed i think 
Right, let's make our way along the side road here. Uh, we'll end up coming out somewhere out near the uh, near Lone Wolf. And then we'll make our way up the main road and uh, go and plant corn on our two little chaffing fields, five and six. As we make our way past Mannings again, you can see just through the windows, you might have just seen our uh, stricken Magnum still sat in there, <laughs> still being worked on. But here we are at our new fields over here. So let's get onto the field first of all. Let's open up the cedar. Again, because of the close proximity of the road, we kind of need to do a headland here. Otherwise, we're going to end up poking out into the road every time we finish a pass. Now, it's a decent sized field, but I mean, this is a big cedar, so it shouldn't take us too long to get this field done. And the field opposite on the other side of the road is going to take us even less time. That's, that should be done in, in just a couple of passes once we get that headland in again to avoid the ditch. You can see it's a much shorter, smaller field, so that one should be done in like two or three passes tops, and there won't be very long passes either. This field a little bit bigger. So. We'll take a little bit longer to seed, and we'll get a pretty good yield off this field as well, I think. Spin the corner. Kind of overdone it a bit there. But you can see how the cedar got dragged around a little bit again on that corner. That's just, you know, something that feels a little clunky. But it is what it is, I suppose. Right. I'll see you when this field is finished. I've just been paying attention to the current market prices for soybean and also the kind of the predicted prices as well. Uh, obviously, these predictions are wrong. <laughs> the prices are way lower than is suggested that we're actually going to get so suggesting here we're probably looking at around 2200 uh, and it's nowhere near that but you can see we're on that upward turn so whereas we were struggling to get you know around 12 1300 you know shown as a prize for our soybean earlier you can see now the market is currently at 1740 at lone wolf and a little bit less than that at agri xjs so the market is definitely starting to warm up for soybeans we will soon start to get into that window of prices going up in fact actually you know uh, day six you'll see that we'll start to get a big upturn in crops so we may possibly depending on whether we're looking to get a demand we may possibly offload some crops a little bit early but day day two and day three are the two days that we'll be looking to offload our soybean so we've got two days and two sell points where we can kind of spread our crop across those two those two windows there. And hopefully between the two of them we can actually start bringing in quite a lot of money you know, for our soybean crop, which we, we do desperately need. You know, we still have a monster debt and even though it's come down a bit thanks to some more orchard money, it's still, <laughs> we're still nearly nine grand in debt on hand not counting the 990 that we have with the bank that hasn't changed at all so yeah um i mean we spent today what 15 14 grand on seed costs uh we spent you know 13 and a half yesterday we're going to spend another 14 or so tomorrow quite comfortably planting our soybean so yeah very very expensive days ahead still and of course the cost of running this you know an extra 16 grand every hour you know, it's it's just it's you know our expenses are huge at the moment. We couldn't have got that orchard up any sooner, and uh, I'm so grateful that we actually have a, a nice chunk of cash coming in from that. Otherwise, we would be fa facing financial ruin this summer as a result of uh, our magnum breaking down.
So we're just tidying up these last couple of patches here on this field before we head over the road. As I say, field five should take us a matter of minutes to do. It's so small in comparison to this field for a seed of this size. It shouldn't take us, shouldn't take us very long at all. But there we go. That's the first of our chaffed corn planted, or chaffing corn planted. And I think maybe next year we'll look and see if we can get fields 15 and 17 to add to that mix as well. That could be uh, that could be the next step that we take, or possibly field four, uh, and maybe field three as well. Perhaps rip up that grass field and turn it into crop, and bl blend it into field uh, field four there. Yeah, we've got a couple of different options. Let's see which will be the uh, the way we go. It all depends on how uh, how our finances look in winter. Obviously, a good crop window is going to really help us out with that. Look at the size of this cedar for this field, it's tiny, you know, in comparison to the field. This is really going to take us no time at all. Our helper has just finished, I think that is our uh, sprayer. I started spraying on field 45. Try and make some progress on that field there. I'm going to need to kind of do quite a lot of that field manually. So I got a, a bit done, you know, the long bit near the farm itself. I got that bit done you know, with uh, the help of a worker once I put the base border line in. Uh, and then I'll need to finish that off manually. Uh, I also need to get field 44 rolled as well, so that's uh, weeded and hit stage 3. Uh, and I realised I can help you know, balance the cost of our fertilising a little bit by using our slurry spreader. I completely forgot about that. So tomorrow uh, we'll be getting up very early and we'll be using the uh, Puma to start spraying some or spreading some slurry. I do not want to go into the edge of a field I don't own and cause some damage. This thing is huge and very heavy. It'll just churn up those fields if we're not careful. So we'll have to do a headland at this end as well, I think, just to give us some turning room. This is a big, unwieldy kind of combination of uh, vehicle and uh, equipment here. But yeah, we'll start spreading some slurry down on our soybean field so 51 uh so not 51 sorry 53 54 and 49 uh we're going to uh, spread some slurry on all three of those fields there uh and hopefully that'll uh, just save us a bit of cash because we've got all that digestate still at the bga that we didn't use last year and of course we added to that with those uh, those extra rounds of silage baling that we did as well so We've got plenty of digestate on hand that's waiting for use. So we'll break out the digestate truck and uh, make sure that we have that available to us. We'll have to uh, speak to, uh, uh, to the BGA. Make sure that we have uh, you know, Gavco on standby with our uh, you know, with top up for, for digestate for us. And then we'll uh, we'll start you know sticking that down, as I say, on those soybean fields. That'll reduce the need for us to spend you know quite a bit of money spraying those fields. <sighs> a little bit of a fish tail there. There we go. Can I get that in one final pass? I don't know. I think I might have to go two passes to get that last little bit done there. So that's kind of the plan for the rest of today, um, which is going to happen off camera because we're running out of time now. Uh, I'll get the rest of field 45 sprayed. I'll roll out the grass on field 45, sorry, 44. And then once those are done, you know, uh, we'll make sure that everything is set up for tomorrow so that we can 
start putting down that digestate and then we can start seeding our soybean maybe we'll have the magnum back tomorrow i don't know it all depends on how repairs are going and how quickly they can get some of the the, the last final parts they need in to get that engine a rebuilt and b upgraded so we might possibly get the magnum back tomorrow but i think we're probably still going to be stuck with the quad track which means another very expensive running day but as long as we do get the magnum back that'll be the most important thing so i'm going to call it a day here as we finish this field off and uh, start running back and don't forget you can find me on facebook and you can also find me on twitter links uh, to my Facebook page and my Twitter account are both in the video description down below so please do feel free to stop by and say hi on either of those two platforms as always I'll continue to try and get you know, more Lone Oak episodes out as quickly as possible so we should have a new episode every two days uh, also you can check out the other two game series that I have running at the moment as well uh, Jurassic World Evolution runs every two days as does City Skylines Mass Transit uh, both of those are running uh, on concurrent days so City Skylines on one day the next day is Mass Transit then back to sorry um, the next day is Jurassic World then back to City Skylines and so on and so forth and we'll continue to do that for the length of those two series so hopefully you'll tune in for those uh, if not I will see you back here on the farm for some more Lone Oak very soon. <laughs>